Hi, welcome to Science Club Podia. This is where I talk about science in everyday life. I dedicate this podcast to kids and their whole family to enjoy. And anyone who wants to listen from a kid's perspective, enjoy. Hello, everyone. Today, I have a very, very special guest. I'm here with Kat Wizza. Kat Wizza is a scientist in molecular biology, and he got his PhD in University of Montpellier in France. That is that, that says that's in France. Like France is a good place to study. And he's also an influencer on Instagram, and he tells you how to be a good scientist. Omriza also loves to share on his Instagram about how to educate people about COVID-19. It's very, very, very informative. I looked at it and then it's like so cool because like the graphics are cool, the explanation is cool. Yeah, and it's, it's really, really exciting. So yeah, so do you want to say hello to Kat Reza? Hello Kat Reza, how are you? Hello Rainer, I'm fine, I'm fine. And how are you? fine but, but it's like 10 a.m in the morning i'm like i just woke up at like seven or six so i'm like i had like three mm. hours to prepare and i just yeah i was like getting ready so yeah so how, how yes. are you in bogor yes i i'm living currently in bogor in indonesia uh as you are saying that there is uh 10 a.m in the morning in bogor now it's uh, actually around uh, 5 p.m. in the what? almost evening here. Oh, so it's like seven hour difference. Yes, seven hour difference. So is it 7.22? It is 7.22 exactly, yes. You are correct. Yeah. So, so I'm going to just talk about science because this is Sanclopodia. So I just want to talk about when was the first time you did science and why did you choose CRISPR to study about? Wow, well, thank, thank you. For, first of all, thank you, Rainer, for inviting me to come to your uh, cyclopedia. It's, it's, it's been an honor for me. And I'm so glad to meet you finally. And we can talk about CRISPR. And your first question, when did you first time did I do science? I actually... I always have an admiration for science since I was seven years old, uh, when I was a bit older than you are. And I had many questions about nature, exactly. So uh, I think that was drive uh, my curiosity about biology. And then ever since I, 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 I fell in love in, with science, and especially I, I, I love doing biology. And when I grow older, among many of science subjects that I would like to do, as I'm saying uh, to you, but biology, gene editing becomes one of my favorites. I love the idea of gene editing, yeah. meaning that to drive uh, the change in living things, uh, we only need to, to, to do a small edit just inside the gene and the genome then you have differences that, that can change the organisms, how they behave. And even so, if we will talk about this later, about uh, curing disease in humans. Yeah. Uh, and you, lay, yeah, yeah. And you Rainer, what, what do you love most about biology? Do, do you love biology? So, I just love biology because when I was eating my food and I got choked, I thought that, um, that there was some sort of you know my esophagus, I thought there was like some sort of thing and if I tilt backwards, the food will dive into a pouch and then I'll choke. Um, I was like, so like it was interesting and I and I thought different things about the body and I had no answers until I just, until I got my biology book. And then it's mm. exciting because I like studying microbiology because they're like tiny mm. animals. Just look at your hands. Okay, there's like millions or maybe even trillions or billions of cells inside like one square centimeter of your hand. It's like so, like so big. That's so cool. Um, Riza, but why do you choose to study CRISPR? Or is it a glitch? I don't think so. Oh, 
So, some reason, why, why do you choose CRISPR to study about? Why did you want to learn about CRISPR? Is it because that you want to know about gene editing? It's faulty signal. Oh. Uh, did you get disconnected? Yeah, I think so. I got disconnected just of uh, five minutes, I think. Five minutes? Okay. Um, or less than, less than, yeah. So, by the time you got disconnected, I was asking you about why do you choose to study CRISPR? Is it because that you yeah. study about ed editing DNA and then you wanted to study CRISPR? Yes, because uh, among many science subjects that I would like to do, so gene, gene editing is uh, becomes one of my favorite because I love the idea of uh, the gene editing, meaning that you drive a change in living things, but we only need a, a small change. That small change can drive uh, so many changes. And then I ask you about uh, biology, right? And you you like uh, biology and you explain about microbiology, and uh, and yeah, it's I think it's it's, it's the thing that. Uh, that, that uh, drive uh, my curiosity as well as your driving curiosity about microbiology. Yeah, so, so it's really exciting if you are interested in one thing and then there's actually something that can actually, that is connected to the interest, then you want to do it. So I yeah. question, um, do you know what is CRISPR-Cas9? How does CRISPR work? So those of you who don't know what CRISPR is, don't get confused because I'm going to tell you. So CRISPR means that it's a system that's found in bacteria, which is basically an immune Wait. system to make immunity against bacteria phages which try to invade. The like a virus of bacteria. So I explain more about this in my Cut Mirror podcast, which you can search on in YouTube. So, so we have like, so when the virus injects the DNA, there's a protein. What's the protein called? It's like Cas protein. Yeah, Cas base nine. Yes. The Cas nine protein puts the virus DNA yeah. into the bacteria DNA, and then the Cas nine copies another piece of that DNA. And when it finds the same virus, and then it, and then it finds the same thing, then it's going to go. Eh, oh, this is the one that like, it just destroys the, the DNA. Yeah. Yes. Is it correct. Yeah, actually, so CRISPR, as you mentioned, is, yes, originated from bacteria. And now we use this technology to edit the gene or genomes in human, animals, and even plants. So oh, the, the goal is try to edit the, the small changes in the gene and the genome so that you have a, a global change in the organism. For example, if you want an apple to change color, not red, but green, you can just edit the gene that is responsible to the change of the color from red to green. And then the change is not that you has to destroy all of the gene, but only to edit just one tiny bit part of this gene. And then the gene can transform expressing not the red color, but the green color. So that is CRISPR right now. It's, it's very advanced. Yeah, but what, what does CRISPR stand for? I remember some of it, but it's like... Yeah. Clustered regularity, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. interspace, short palindromic repeats. It's so long. Exactly. So that's why we exactly. increase it to like one, two, three, four, three, five, four like five. five, like six. Yeah. Six. six, yeah. Because, just, yeah. yeah, I'm studying clustered regulatory interspace, short palindromic repeat is so hard to say. So you uh, say, yeah. I'm, I'm studying this part, way easier. Yeah, yes, but you mention it and you you spell it really rapidly. Clustered regularly, interspace short palindromic repeats. Mm -hmm. uh, do, do you know why Rainer? Why why CRISPR called uh, CRISPR a clustered regularly interspace short palindromic repeats? Is that because maybe you can imagine? Is that because the sequence of the gene? has been repeated several times. So that is why cluster is clustered because it's in one place regularly. So regularly it's, right. it's been interspace. Yeah. Right. You have interspace of a sequence, right? And palindromic means that the sequence is repeated, the same sequence 
and they call it repeats. Mm -hmm. So, so the same sequence yeah. repeats. Yeah, stem sequence repeat. It was and it's it is still the immune system of a bacteria against viruses. That is why they call it CRISPR. Not a question. But Rainer, I, I think I have yeah. Yeah, but I think I have one question for you. Do do you know that CRISPR was founded by the scientists in 1987? It was a long time ago, 30 years ago, 33 years ago to be exact. And you weren't born at that time, right? Even me, yes, even me, I was just a six years old kid. The scientists discovered this motif that we call CRISPR inside the bacteria. Maybe you know this bacteria because you love, you love microbiology. It's like Escherichia, yeah. You, do you know bacteria called uh, Escherichia coli? Wait, what? Escherichia coli is the bacteria inside our guts. Oh yeah, um, yep. but, but E. coli bacteria. E. coli, exactly, E. coli. The e. coli carries the motif of CRISPR and it was founded by a scientist in 1987, 33 years ago. That's but not until, yeah, but not until 2012 that this technology modified, yeah, exactly, harnessed and modified by the scientists and used to be uh, the new technology that we use today, even I use it in my laboratory nowadays. Isn't it cool, right? Yeah, it's, a, cool. It's, it's very interesting. Yeah. Now we can get it from the ba bacteria, use it to defend themselves, but now we can use it to like genetically edit plants to be resistant to global warming and all other stuff. Exactly. But, yes. These are other questions. Yeah. And why can't cells in why can we implant CRISPR into cells so that we're like immune to coronavirus like something like that yeah i think it's a, a good uh, uh, idea we can do it actually we can do it the, the problem is yes we, we can do it we, we can actually with this technology we can do almost any uh, edit or any um, genetic engineering that we are never think about before because uh, it's, it's just a tiny bit of package that we call CRISPR and Cas9 is a package right it's very very small and you can just inject it into a cell and it will edit anything that you put signature on it because it has signature for example if they have a red signature here they will go into the red part of the genome right it will go like this and then cut and then you will have a change of uh, something of, of a gene a gene that may be responsible of your sickness and you can you cannot get sick for example if you edit the gene that can receive coronavirus you edit this gene that the, the gene cannot be expressed and then the coronavirus cannot infect you that is an uh, imagination also from uh, the, the world scientists and it is possible to do it it just need time to do it and then we need to be able to validate it because it's when you edit something, you have to be responsible for it, Rainer. Become a scientist, we all must be responsible of what we are doing, so we must do it right. I think you agree with that. No? Yeah, well, that's really good because if you want to make people like, I don't know, like make them have like stronger immune systems, and suddenly it's like worse immune system that's your responsibility to fix it back it's not their other people's responsibility so um, yeah i mean so, so can't Riza, guess who the two women invented i mean harnessed crispr what's the name hmm. i know them but maybe renner do you know them Oh, I don't know them by like person, but but no. I know the names. Okay, I will I will I will mention it for you. The first one is my favorite scientist, a lady, a very humble one, called Dr. Jennifer Doudna. Mm -hmm. Yeah, from United States of America, and then the other one is a a French lady, Emmanuel Charpentier, right? D did I spell it correctly? Yeah. Yeah. And do you know them? Yeah, do you do you know these two ladies before? Or even if you read it from uh, 
from uh, I don't know magazines or or something else. I read it from the article that you gave me about CRISPR and the malaria thing. That two scientists named Jennifer Dolna and Emmanuel yeah. Charpentier discovered CRISPR, which can end malaria. That's yeah, cool. it could end malaria, right? Because CRISPR and Cas9 right now, for example, in one disease. Do, do you know? Do, do you know the disease called malaria, right? Or yes. are you uh, afraid of mosquito, Rainer? You do, do you, you you don't like mosquito, or or everything is fine for with you with mosquitoes? Uh, I'm like extremely scared when I see pictures of mosquito, hmm. and then the needles go from like yeah. <laughs> like this. I'm like so scared. Yes. Yeah. Scary. Yeah. We know, you know, we know that. We know that uh, not all mosquitoes are bad mm -hmm. because only a few of them species are, are bad. Because, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, because they bring diseases, for example, malaria. So malaria is, has been a very, uh, very widespread disease, especially in, uh, in Africa and also in Southeast Asia, especially also in Indonesia, you know that. Uh, because with, mala with malaria, we are very, very uh, uh, concerned about this. It's a disease that, that, that uh, very, is still having a major impact in this world. So uh, you know that. I, I, can, I, I will explain to you about, maybe in, in, in five minutes, explain to you about how nature always has a way on its balance, right? For, for example, if we talk about CRISPR and malaria. If you try to perform a huge change in organisms such as bacteria, animals, plants, and also humans, the greater the change, as I mentioned to you, the greater nature will resist. It's always back to its balance. Oh, so yeah. CRISPR, yeah, CRISPR is trying to change, but containing the balance of, of, of the nature. So mm. I brought this pen, see, radar, for a disease to be happen. Malaria, for example, it needs the connection between the human, this is the human, and also the pathogen, which is mosquito bringing also the parasite inside the mosquito. So you need to go like this to be able to malaria happen, the human part and also the, 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 the mosquito part. CRISPR, by the friends or our colleague uh, scientists from UK, they added a gene, for example, this is a bunch of a paper. Let's call it this a gene. And then you edit the gene from the mosquito right here. Mm -hmm. And then when you bring the mosquito to the human part, they can't it, cannot, it cannot connect. And then the disease is not happening. So this is what the scientists nowadays are doing with malaria. Instead of giving people a drugs, which is sometimes very dangerous for the health and also dangerous for the patient. Yeah, exactly. They change the gene inside the mosquito so that the mosquito cannot bring the disease into the human. So Don't you find it interesting, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was like really interesting because like, because I like your explanation of like the, the gene that blocks it. And yeah. Now you blame the mosquitoes if they... If you have a friend that's malaria and you say, you're a bad mosquito, and after you just blame them. It's not actually their fault. There's um, a pathogen called plasmodium, which controls, plasmodium. controls the brain, which controls the mosquito's yeah. brain to target at us. So it's not the mosquito's mm. fault. And only like a few species can transmit malaria, and only the females can bite. Exactly. Transmit malaria. Only the females that can bite. So they change the gene, right? Mm -hmm. They change the gene on the uh, on the mosquitoes populations, so that the mosquito population cannot create a female one. Because only the female that can deliver you the disease. But if you eliminate the female one, and all always you meet a mosquito uh, only only a male mosquito, so the disease will never happen. So that is actually the goal of CRISPR that we use today on going to malaria eradication. And that is, a, I think, a, a brilliant idea that has uh, emerged in, among the scientists 
to be able to contain malaria because malaria is very dangerous rainer especially in Asia and in, in Southeast Asia and also in Africa. So there's basically like two ways you can prevent malaria. You can either decrease the females and turn them into males, or you can prevent, give the mosquitoes immunity to the plasmodium. So there's two ways. And if we use the two, there's going to be like hardly anything. And what I mean by genetically modify them so that they're immune to plasmodium, I mean, not just one, I'm like, if two mosquitoes mate and one of them is genetically modified, then if they mate together, it's going to be half of their population will be genetically modified and half of them mm -hmm. not going to be genetically modified. So we need to have both of the, the parents genetically modified so that there's going to be like a 99.5% chance. 5%. Yes. 99% yes. chance that it's going to be like genetically modified. Yeah, it's like cool. It's extremely cool because like it's so high, 99.5. It's like barely any chance that you'll get yeah. not genetically modified. It's so cool. Yeah, it's it's so cool because uh, because the approach uh, using CRISPR and Cas9 has been implemented since uh, 2013, I think, and it takes uh, seven years. Now it's 2020. It takes seven years to perfect it, the technique of CRISPR Cas9 to improve how we face the problem of malaria. And that is a uh, research, Rainer. Research needs time and needs intelligence behind it and needs tools. And one of the tools that we talk about today is CRISPR and Cas9. Yeah, yeah. So, Kat Riza, how can CRISPR help us and why is it important to study CRISPR? Yeah, CRISPR can help us because it revolutionizes the uh, approach on genetic engineering in general. Not only in plants, not only in humans, not only in animals or bacteria even, but everything changes because of CRISPR. Why? Because before we have to bring other genes from other species inside, uh, up inside the, the target organism to be changed the target organisms. And then we can see differences in the behavior and in phenotype and morphology, etc. And that is dangerous. That is dangerous. Why? Because you have this foreign gene to be inserted in the gene that doesn't belong to its uh, origin. So it can cause some abomination, some changes that you don't want. That's why people are afraid of genetic modified organism. But CRISPR did not account it as the GMO or genetic modified organism. It is what it is because you don't put a gene or a foreign gene inside the target organism but you only edit the gene that is already inside your organism. So you can you only edit to be able to make these genes perform better or to eliminate the genes that you think creating a disease inside the organism. So that is why CRISPR can help us with many things. Diseases like malaria, thalassemia major, uh, disease in plants like uh, fungal infections yeah. and then maybe someday we can or maybe in the near future we can use this to uh, eliminate SARS-CoV-2 perhaps the imagination of scientists is uh, large as a uh, as the uh, uh, universe so you can imagine anything to be to be able to uh, perform a research on it and then using CRISPR and Cas9, I think uh, almost everything is possible. Yeah, so yeah, it's like CRISPR is like really exciting because you can genetically modify and then before the techniques were expensive, dangerous. So, so yeah. imagine you're buying a toy. So imagine a kid wanted to buy this puppet, okay? And after that, yeah. the stage still, yeah. and after that it was expensive, but it, I mean, it didn't be good. So if it's expensive, you'd expect, hey, it has to be good quality, but then it's not that good. But if we change it into a moving, talking puppet, then like this 
So hello, and then it's going to be higher quality, but crisper for this time. It's lower price. So yeah, so it's better. So this is crisper, and this is like this is like yeah. The, the, yeah. the one before and this that can nod its head is crisper. So yes, yeah, cool. Yeah, it's very it's very cool. Yeah, you you put it very right with that puppets because crisper is actually cheaper than the previous technology, less dangerous than before. And then it can uh, uh, move uh, forward into a, a good genetic engineering without having creating an abomination species, meaning that you have a, a species of chimeric, like chimeric is like a monster, you, you don't like it. Because if people are afraid of the ancient technology before CRISPR, then they cannot. They don't. They 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 don't believe in the technology, and they don't want to use the products after. For example, people don't want to eat ape, ape apple apple fruit that has been uh, genetically modified. But maybe people want to eat apple fruit that been edited using CRISPR just to change the sweetness. For example, so you you found apple too sweet, and then you change it using CRISPR, and it becomes less sweet and then you you like it more maybe people will eat it because it can it, it is edited using crispr without uh, with less danger on it yeah so but i got something when i listened to a conversation about jennifer Doudna and then another professor i don't know who it is but he he graduated from harvard uh, yeah oxford and uh, so yeah, so so when he talked, he asked, but how, but how about the risks? What what if people um want want to use it, but they use it for a bad thing? But what what if people want to use it for a good thing, like agriculture and like yeah. But what if bad guys want to rob a bank and then they can't lift up all the diamonds and then they want to genetically modify CRISPR to. To, to make them like superhuman and then they can lift up the diamonds, lift up buildings. So yeah, so so it's not about how CRISPR can do it, it's about what they will use with about CRISPR. Yes, with the with the technology like CRISPR, as you mentioned, Rainer, it's we like face Yes, yeah, we face with the problem of uh, kindness, right? You, you can have a good technology, but if it falls to the wrong hands, they can use it into a bad, for a bad things. But to, in, the, in, in international uh, scientists agreed upon what we call bioethics. Bioethics is the, like the regulations that uh, promote how to use CRISPR on a good side, not on the bad side. And if people decided to use on the bad side, they will be get punished. They will get uh, what they deserve. So uh, we have this kind of regulations that can keep us safe of using CRISPR-Cas9 without uh, uh, passing the boundaries that we we must not pass. Yes, so it's like um. So imagine CRISPR is like some sort of tool that can create you God, and after that you want to become God, and after that, that tool you can duplicate that tool, and then you can duplicate that tool for like bad people and then the bad people kind of come like a bad god and after that the bad god will mm. do bad stuff and then the good god will, will do good stuff so so it's, it's not about if you want to do it it's not about if you want to do it it's about how will you change humanity if the crisper falls into the wrong hands then what what will you do as a punishment miss the punishment enough will they keep on doing it is the punishment severe enough so that they will just stop doing like like if they have something where they can stop using CRISPR and then they get banned from CRISPR and then there's some sort of card which you have to scan for like to apply for CRISPR and then if they get caught using CRISPR and then they're actually doing bad stuff then they, they, they the card gets deleted and then after that they can't use CRISPR anymore. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. There's a there is a uh, uh, several people that would willing to do a bad thing using CRISPR, mm -hmm. but uh, gladly, uh, all of scientists agree that if you found to do such bad thing, 
then they will take away your license of uh, as a scientist and you can be banned for good etc and i think if people want to think it carefully about the bioethics they will do it right because every technology that we have today rainer is we have this for the good of the mankind not for the bad of the mankind we we have this technology to change our life to change our our daily life to be able to have it uh, better than before yeah so so we've talked a lot but, but i just want to know because i've asked this question a lot of times it's about why is it yeah. important to have a dream for kids and what do what, what would what is your suggestion for kids who want to study about crispr because i I've, i've kept on asking this question because it's different people different answers so we can find out what different people say so what is yeah, it for the kids yes th- th- thank you for the questions it's a common question but it's very important for you to ask me because i, I i'm very happy to answer this it is very very important to have dreams for kids not only kids for everybody yeah for everybody right i can answer this uh, quite simply why uh, dreams give you purposes right and purposes give you passion and passion when you have it you can achieve anything this is not just only a sentence but it's a very powerful sentence i do have a dream and that is why since i was a kid i've always wanted to be a scientist the one in the laboratory right the one in the laboratory pipetting etc using a gun using a googles and a lab coat and now i am a scientist but i still do have a dream rainer i dream that people are willing to acknowledge science as part of their life because i also teach rainer maybe if if you uh, know this I, i teach as a professor in university also so i want my teaching to be able to wake the passion the, the sorry the passion of science amongst my students and i think that is a very important thing to be able to make a useful of our uh, knowledge and and when what we do and i i i i am curious rainer and, and you what, what what is actually your dream if you grow uh, if you are grown up yeah so i've changed my dream a lot in the few podcasts so i oh that, um so if you want to actually find out my dream you should listen to my podcast but uh it's just really hard to decide because i love space yeah um like, yes i love almost every, every type of science but i like biology i like physics i like chemistry i like so there's a lot of things i like to do but i might just say for now this may update in the next podcast but i like to study biology hmm right yes but actually what or what what are you what were you saying is that you love science in general you love space do you know what i love space too mm-hmm. i'm working as a biologist right you can have many many of a passion about science but one day you might have to choose one of profession about science if you love this and you will ever work with this passion of science in the future you can have you can be able to for example you can be a molecular biologist but it is it is not forbidden for you to love space also you can be an astronaut but you can be also a biologist both the side and and working together biology. and bringing you yeah yeah bringing you a, a good uh, passion to move forward yeah so it's like really exciting to have a dream when the powerful words are like they just speak out a lot so yeah it's yeah. really exciting so yeah thank yeah. you for saying that kuriza yeah and it's happened yeah sorry rena i i remind you that today it happens that today in indonesia is the young day yeah. the sorry the youth day the youth day and in bahasa we call it hari sumpah pemuda the, the youth pledge day so our message today what we just discuss about dreams and about passions is very important not only for both of us but 
also my message, and you maybe deliver this message to other young generations to have dream. It is very important to have dream because dreams can make our lives better. Right? If our lives better, we can make our countries better also. Mm -hmm. Right? Do you agree? Mm -hmm. I agree. Wow, that's like really, really, really awesome because you said be, be, because if our dreams, our dreams can change our country and our country can improve. Like, um, imagine like someone might just say the puppet again is running an electricity thing and then it's like selling dreams and then the mm. dreams are being sent to like some sort of dream brick construction thing and then imagine the country and then imagine a house is a country and then he's sending the dreams he gives the dreams onto the the the, the base of the country and he builds a country by dreams yay that's really exciting because like dreams yeah yeah uh, and dreams is the foundation of everything if you don't have a dream you don't have passion right pa passion if you don't have passions you, you don't change anything so the first thing that you need to do you you must be able to dream something because it's free rainer we we don't we, we don't pay for our dream we, we dream it freely. Mm -hmm. so, so we have freedom to dream. So we can dream whenever we want. What we, we can dream whatever we want, whenever we want, and however we want. And it doesn't make yeah. sense. Yes, it yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Really. Yeah. That's, that's the first thing that you need to do. Dream about it first. And then you do it, the work, with passion. And then you will get something. And then when you get something, you feel a very achieved, etc. And then suddenly you didn't maybe you, you we won't realize about it, but we already changed something. If we don't change anything in front of us, at least we change our mindset, the way we think, right? The way we think, and we can influence other with kindness, with good, with science to be able to put their dream into reality. I think that is the, the main message today that uh, that you from the question that you asked me. Yeah, that's like really, really exciting. So would you like to end the podcast here or do you have any other questions? Because yeah, we talk mm. here. do you have any other questions? Yeah, maybe uh, one last uh, question. Maybe if you can imagine uh, uh, Rainer, if you can achieve anything, what is the one thing that you want to achieve? Oh, that's a hard thing. I'd like to achieve. Yeah. There's one thing I'd like to achieve. I'd like to achieve. The, the, I'm doing science, and then I like doing like my hundredth podcast in Encyclopedia, and I'd like doing um one hundredth podcast, and then on the hundredth podcast, I could do like something special, like I could have like podcast where what what topic would you like we could have like a topic where we could talk about biology and then for biology we could invite everyone who talks about biology and then we have like some sort of zoom meeting where we can talk about mm. it. yeah yeah it's, it's going to be very interesting if you if you can uh put that uh, together and it's a very I, I cannot wait also to see it because uh, you can meet many people and you can talk with different minds, right? Brilliant minds. And then we can have sort of exchanges and that can help you also, Rainer, to to grow as a as a, someone who loves science. Mm. So, so I'm going to call that the Ultra Podcast. I've been talking that to my... Ultra friend. Podcast, yeah. The ultra yeah. Podcast. And then we could invite more about space, like we could invite Kaji, we can invite folks. We could invite like more people. Yeah, so it's really exciting. Mm. Mm. So uh, thank you for being in my podcast. I really appreciate because yeah. because um before when I was like six years old or like five years old, no five years old, I created um some sort of video called Crispin Kazian and we used 
uh, like some sort of paper and I created drawings and I said and the bachelor is happy because of this because he found the DNA and that it's like and it's like I just like being crisp and then it's fun <laughs> crisp is fun yeah th- well well thank you for inviting me also Renan is is very happy to to talk to you and discuss to you about uh, CRISPR today it was a very interesting talk that we have i'm 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 quite inside i i'm i'm quite excited also to move forward on my research to go on uh, about um, as many as uh, crispr approach as possible but like so like um before i say bye i just want to say how would you like to continue this podcast yeah what one yeah. the, the podcast to, to be about like the next time because my done a comeback podcast which i thought like I, i say it's a comeback because we talked about our merit once and then we mm. talked again so well, what was the yeah. topic that you, you would like next time we do a comeback yeah if we do a comeback we might be talking about um, maybe different type of crispr because we talk about crispr today is the basic one right mm-hmm. it's already the beginning of the understanding of crispr maybe you can discuss base, about the base of CRISPR yes that we can the go basic. slightly complex complex extremely complex and then not extremely complex let's say until we can learn about crispr yeah maybe we can discuss about crispr in in uh, in the virus or maybe in crispr in the bacteria the system that belongs to the bacteria returns to the bacteria and then we can see how it how it goes so don't to see fine because we, we talk to so so bye cut reza yeah. i'm so happy and, and i'm just so cheerful talking about crispr bye 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 thank you and see you in the next podcast